Welcome everyone in Nigeria and the rest of the world. This is State of the Nation. I am Gimba Umar Rai behind me. Data feeds are still coming through all in one place simultaneously on our social media platforms. Be part of the show. Tweet at Gimba Umar CTV. Use the hashtag State of the Nation to air your thoughts. The government of Switzerland says that it is willing to help Nigeria end human trafficking and support victims to access justice and rehabilitation. The migration advisor of the Embassy of Switzerland in Nigeria, Jolanda Fitzsaharan, made this known during a, uh, a ceremony for presentation of the empowerment equipment to victims of human trafficking at the Benin Zonal Office of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. Uh, light uh, as uh, it may sound, the problem of trafficking is indeed deep and worrisome. Let's get an insight on this. The Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, Julie Oka Donley, joins me from our Abuja studios. Many thanks indeed for joining us on State of the Nation at this time. I can imagine you have uh, your hands quite full lately because of the so many issues popping up uh, for your agencies to tackle. But concerning the refugees situation, especially those returning to the country, we understand about 40,000 of them uh, tell us the efforts you have been able to make this far to try to absorb 40,000 people is quite much. Well, um, the truth is um, NAPTIP concerns itself with victims of human trafficking. And so when a lot of these um, irregular migrants who are repatriated back to Nigeria arrive, we profile, identify, and then deal with just those who are victims of human trafficking. We are able to accommodate them in our various shelters um, scattered in 10 states of Nigeria. And sometimes um, if the shelters are full, we, we get assistance from other shelters. And then right now, as we speak, uh, you're expecting about 2,000 of uh, that category in Lagos and to uh, accommodate them, you are moving some of those persons already in your facility here uh, under your care to be accommodated in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. Uh, what plans do you have on the ground for the ones being expected? Yeah, um, the ones coming, like I earlier said, are not all going to be victims of human trafficking. And so those of them who are victims will keep in our shelters if the shelters are full, we transfer them to other shelters that are, are available. And um, of course, we seek for help with other available shelters as well. To, of course, uh, identify which ones are under your purview to look after. I beg your pardon? How are you able to identify those amongst, the, say, 2,000 being expected in Lagos? How are you able to identify who are under your care for you to make that selection and separate from the, uh, uh, from the bulk of those coming? As a matter of fact, we're expecting 295. Um, we, 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 we ask questions, we interview them. Um, during the question and answer session, we're able to determine whether they are victims of trafficking or just um, irregular migrants who just went there, you know, and um, were doing some odd jobs before they were eventually repatriated. We were able to, to find that out through our trained officers. I'm really concerned on the, the sheer number of Nigerians seen, I mean, uh, outside of this country. In Mali, for instance, more than 5,000, uh, we have been told, uh, who left the country for greener pastures, promised them uh, in Europe, but somehow they got caught up in the middle and at the end ended up in Mali. Currently, uh, they are living in less than humane conditions. What's going on? How do we help those kind of people? Well, we have a bilateral agreement with the um, Malian state, um, um, Malian government, and um, we're looking for ways to repatriate um, those who are willing to come back, you know, to Nigeria and rehabilitate them. Really, a lot of them have been caught up in this um, web of deceit, you know, for better jobs, you know, and uh, all, practically all of them in all of these countries are, are trafficked victims. And so we are looking for ways to bring them back, to rehabilitate them and um, gradually reintegrate them back into the society. Of course, 
with the help of the uh, Malian government and Nigerian government. We are working on it. Mali is one story. Another story is in Libya. And then we have that problem of selling Nigerians in Libya, in some cases for about $400, we understand. What must be done, do you think, to stop this form, uh, this rather archaic, what, what, how do we qualify it now, uh, this unwanted, this uh, barbaric act from continuing? A lot of things must be done to stop this act from continuing. Um, from the source of the country of source, first of all, we need to address the root causes of human trafficking. We also need to address the root causes of human trafficking at the con transit as well as the destination countries. But the government is doing a lot in terms of providing jobs, you know, and coming up with various programs for the youth, um, promoting young entrepreneurs, giving soft loans to start businesses and all of that. There's so much going on. Uh, a lot of um, sensitization actually needs to be done. I mean, sensitization, the parents need to be educated because the truth is that about 90% of Irregular migration is as a result of ignorance, total ignorance, besides the fraudulent aspect of it by the greedy traffickers who prey on these ignorant um, people who are mostly uneducated. You know, so a lot of sensitization has to be done, and that's what NAPTIP has been doing. We've engaged all the communities you can think of that are endemic. Uh, we've engaged the community leaders, the church leaders, the women, market women leaders, youth leaders, ma and uh, road transport association, and all of that. And we're also sensitizing the parents. We're now at the process of doing some documentaries and some movies that we will take to them in the communities, take to them and let them watch and see what happens during these perilous journeys, what's been going on with their children. You know, I, perhaps it will really help in stopping these um, youths from traveling. Because uh, in some of your submissions, you've identified poverty as the major cause of uh, uh, getting people in this, uh, this ring of, uh, of trafficking. But beyond poverty and maybe job, joblessness in, in the country, what other things do you think are a catalyst that gets people wanting to travel oh. out of Nigeria for some uh, blue-collar jobs that have been promised them? On, on the part of the, of the traffickers is sheer greed and, and wickedness. And then on the part of the irregular migrants, I mean, they really believe, they truly believe they are going for, for, a, for a better life. You know, the ignorance, it's, the level of ignorance is very high. I mean, that's what I've been talking about. The ignorance, illiteracy, and of course, deceit, you know, it, it plays a major role. I mean, the poverty bit of it is not, uh, it's not as bad as the other aspects because we, we, we've seen cases where these people actually sell their belongings so, I mean, you cannot be that poor to have enough, enough to sell and enable you to pay these criminals because it's not even a free trip. They actually paid to be trafficked without knowing it. Because uh, we know that all, you have been in partnership with other organizations to help provide an acceptable level of empowerment for uh, returnees, especially, uh, for instance, these girls that we're looking at now. One of such was held in a dual state with comments on the progress so far uh, let's take a listen at uh, uh, the Swiss authorities and what they're trying to say to uh, you, NAPTIP, on the one hand, and to Nigerians. areas uh, very collaborate with Nigeria and one of them is the fight against human trafficking and migrant smuggling and this project is one of the, the areas uh, we are collaborating with Nigeria in the field of human uh, trafficking. The idea is to, on the one side to strengthen the capacities of uh, the authorities uh, and the social workers, uh, NAPTIP, especially NAPTIP, the main uh, the responsible agency of human trafficking, but also uh, to, uh, to help uh, to um, integrate, reintegrate the victims, to assistance to the victims that they have access to justice, but also to be reintegrated and re rehabilitated. Uh. The Delta State government um, has done a great deal through Senator Dr. Kowa's smart agenda to empower youths. We have the YAGEP program, which is a youth program on agriculture, entrepreneurship program. We have STEP, 
which is skills, training. We have PPSP. Our hope is that this will be a turning point in their life because it will enable them to become economically viable and independent. Uh, beyond that, we also believe that uh, if they are diligent and if they take to heart the training, two-day business training that has been given, that um, in a short while they will also become employers of labor. Now, you have heard about, uh, uh, you have just heard from them, uh, it's not all too new to you, but you have been working with agencies and organizations outside of Nigeria. What is it in real terms you've been able to achieve because I understand you actually just returned into the country? Yeah, actually, we've been able to, uh, we, we, we get a lot of support from our international partners, technical support, um, a lot of capacity building. They've been able to train a lot of our officers in the area of investigation and prosecution, which is very crucial for, um, to our work. Um, we've also gotten a lot, quite a bit of um, operational vehicles um, from some of these international partners. So in that regard, yes, and then um, victim care and support, which is what you just saw a few minutes ago, um, where um, equipments are given to um, former um, victims of trafficking to help them start their lives again and be meaningful to themselves and to the society. So these are quite, you know, some of the things that we receive from our international partners. Italy has also been one of our greatest allies in terms of um, support when it comes to victim care and um, rehabilitation as well as technical support and um, um, training for the officers of NAPTIP. So what then is the level of penetration in terms of the awareness you talked about uh, in creating that kind of synergy? Have other governments and organizations, say for instance the IMO, uh, have they been, been forthcoming? Well, other, other governments in terms of um, international governments, they've been forthcoming in terms of um, sensitization and cooperation with NAPTIP. Um, then we are talking of the home. When we come home, because this sensitization we are talking about is starting from the grassroots in Nigeria. Charity begins at home. We want to start with Nigeria, and then we can think of going out there. Going out there, we go through the embassies. As a matter of fact, in Italy, I was able to train the staff of the Italian embassy, the Nigerian uh, in Italy, you know, the Nigerian staff in it Italy, and that is what we plan to do in all the other embassies across the world. But our major focus now is to train those that are, I mean, is to sensitize those in Nigeria, community to community, state by state. It's that, going to involve all the stakeholders, the governors, the local government chairman, the assembly place. members, and all of that. That's a good place to, to end it. I want to thank you so much indeed for your time. The Director General, National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking much. in Persons, NAPTIP, Julie Okadonley.